Hey, Cal. I'm hey, Cal. I'm at the end. I'm almost there. I've almost made it through the yeah. tour. But I tell you what, I'm weary. I'm weary. Oh, it's been a long, long tour for you. That's, that's crazy, is it? People, people think it's hard for the players. What about the poor journalists? That's what <laughs> I say. The poor journalists. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's a cold <laughs> slog. But I'm almost there. Uh, and then I'll be back home. The next time you see me doing this, I'll be in Australia. No, it's been a great effort. It's been a really good effort from you guys over there. There was a little bit of uh, a stomach bug as well getting around, and you've all managed to put that behind you and get back down to business. And yeah, geez, the Aussies looked impressive last night, so that would have uh, given you something to be entertained by as well. That's exactly right. Uh, let's talk about it. Uh, let's roll the get, into it. get on with the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Timed Out for Sporting News Australia. I'm joined by the wonderful Callum Ferguson, as ever, who has not had stomach bug issues as far as I know. I might have had a little bit while I've been over here, but all good now. <laughs> only a couple of days, so uh, only a couple of days it took me out for, so I'm okay now. Um, That's good. But, yeah, what what an amazing time I've been having watching the cricket over there. Uh, your mate, your South Australian mate, uh, Travis Head, uh, has certainly got things off to a flyer in the One Day series. Didn't he just? And uh, look, he, by all reports, um, led the charge with the celebrations after the series win. And, and geez, hasn't he uh, really taken a lot of the momentum from that Test series win into the One Day series and gotten the Australians off to an absolute flyer at the top of the order? On return in the one day side, 101 of 72 could not have been more impressive. So, you know, I'm not biased at all. He's a good Adelaide boy and he's, uh, he's certainly turning it on at the moment. It wasn't the test series that he was looking for, I'm sure, but certainly, uh, you look at his last six months and it's, it's stacking up pretty well. So great start for the Aussies. There's a, a little bit to like too, Mel, with obviously Ben McDermott sliding in at three and, and notching up a 50. I, I thought Cameron Green. Finished the innings really well as well for the Aussies, obviously replacing Mitch Marsh, which I believe you might have a little bit of news about. Have you got? I, I, I hope it gets okay. Um, he is, Mitch Marsh is uh, out. So he's out of the series. Right. He's going to head to India for rehab um, so so that it's not interrupted by travel and isolation. So he uh, right. should be able to be okay for the Delhi Capitals in the IPL okay. once he's done that. But, yeah, no Mitch Marsh. It's, it's hot off the press. Um, yeah. There you go. Well there you done. go. Yeah, so so Cameron Green uh, will continue that to fulfil that role. So that will... Yeah, just yeah. really... Oh, poor Mitch Marsh. He's been over here for the whole trip. He's carried the drinks. Uh, finally gets his, his opportunity to play some cricket and, uh, yeah, gets a twinge in, in train, a training no, drill. No, it's a, it's a cruel mistress, this sport at times, and, and certainly uh, it's bitten him again. He, he's had no luck. I mean, I, he's, he just seems to get himself up and going and then he has a little, a little road hump somewhere along the line. Hopefully it's just minor and he's able to uh, attack the IPL with some vigour, but uh, yeah, he's had a tough one and, uh, you know, all the best to him on the recovery. But, you know, moving into the bowlers, I mean, Adam Zampa couldn't have been more impressive again, could he? I mean, he, he goes from strength to strength. He, he really is in the top echelon of spinners when it comes to uh, white ball cricket across both the formats. And Nathan Ellis, I thought he, he contributed quite nicely, he picked up a wicket and Sean Abbott, I did enjoy seeing those two get an opportunity in this game um, and Travis said well he, he had the hot hand didn't he he picked up a couple of wickets as well so amazing game look, that was a big win for the Aussies uh, and it was you know I, I thought uh, really stamping their authority on the series um, as a whole and um, certainly Pakistan have got a bit of work to do uh, particularly considering they they won the toss and elected to bowl and it looked like it was slowing up and turning so uh, they might like their uh their go at the toss again, but certainly the Australians couldn't have been more impressive. Yeah, uh, the, they were obviously missing Shaheen Shah Freedy, who got a hit on the knee um, when he was training uh, the day before and so had to be rested. Um, but mm. I guess the, the, the big question now is, is what I'm hearing is that everyone tested negative last night uh, to COVID. That's good news. 
and and all the tests that have been done um, this morning have been negative as well because with Mitch Marsh out, uh, you've still got um, Matt Renshaw's flown in, but he's in ISO for a couple of days. Australia only had 13 players mm. available for that first ODI. Mm. Um, they can't afford to lose any uh, through COVID. But Josh Inglis and and no. Denega, they're they're still um, in isolation as well. So I don't think they can come out until. Oh, maybe even the T20 or maybe for the last ODI. So it's all a... Okay. Yeah, it's hanging by a thread. It's hanging by a thread, but we'll see. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, because if they lose too many more, you could see a, an India-England scenario where they just have to cancel the games, if not reschedule. Um, always difficult in this day and age with COVID around, just trying to get the series played. Um, but fingers crossed everything it runs smoothly from here. Because it did shape up, you know, in that second innings when, you know, Imam al Haq and, and Baba Azam got going, it looked like it was going to be a close finish, but the wicket did slow up, as we said. So, um, yeah, it, it, I feel like it's going to be a good series. It's just uh, I wonder if, if we can get it, get it completed. Um, I hope so. Yes, yeah, so, so do I. So do I, seeing as I'm here. Uh, okay, let's switch. Yeah, <laughs> talk, yeah talk about um, the Women's World Cup. Uh, again, just, just like what an amazing World Cup it has been on every level. I was looking back through it. I cannot remember a World Cup where ever of, of any format in cricket where there have been so many tight games, fought so hard. Um, yeah. And you still feel that Australia are, are a cut above, don't you? Oh, look, you really do. And and I think uh, there was, you know, a bit of talk around, particularly in Australia and New Zealand, that New Zealand might have been the ones that could just find something against the Australians with a, a decent record against them. But um, really, there were so many tightly fought contests throughout the the tournament and, and it just felt like Australia particularly were the ones that really handled it the best um, and were able to probably avoid a lot of those really close finishes and, and really stamp their authority early in games whereas a lot of the other teams, maybe South Africa as well, they were able to do it a few times but it was a real dogfight amongst the rest of the teams wasn't it and, and really it, it, I find it quite remarkable that the England women have managed to get themselves up off the canvas after a really tough summer here in Australia and probably a tough start to the tournament, if you're honest, to fight their way, way back into third spot and make the uh, make the finals. It was an incredible effort from them and a credit to them. Um, but just watching this, uh, this first semi-final between Australia and the West Indies, it just feels like the West Indies never really, you know, they were never really able to gather themselves out there. I reckon they dropped five or six catches. It was it was really quite disappointing and sad, I think, for them, having played quite inspired cricket at times through the tournament. Um, yeah, it was disappointing to see from their point of view. But, you know, as always, if you give good players a chance, they're going to hurt you. And uh, what we did see was a pretty impressive disp- a display from Elisa Healy and, and also... Um, Rachel Haynes, they were just fantastic at the top and, and really set up the the big total of 305 that they were able to put on the board in 45 overs. Yeah, that's, that's a decent total and without Elise Perry as well, uh, who has just had some real bad luck when it comes to injury in, in a couple of major tournaments now. Uh, an interesting thing uh, alongside alongside this, I have noticed the, that there has been an announcement that will be a women's IPL uh, starting next year, I have a yeah. theory, Cal, that that uh, people who people who want wanted a women's IPL can thank uh, Ramiz Raja for that because the announcement of the women's <laughs> PSL did come, and then we see you know they they wanted to have the first one in the subcontinent, and now the race is on uh, with, to see who might get there first with that tournament. Um, but uh, it, it was always sort of thought that it would take India having a real success in a, a world tournament. They've been knocked out. Lo and behold, there's going to be a, a women's IPL, which is probably the right way around. Like you give them the experience and then you'll reap the benefit in, in World Cups. Oh, yeah, no doubt. That's the, the best way to go. I think um, you really want to provide um, high standards and high levels of uh, of 
cricket for your your teams to be able to I don't know um, you know just gain that vital experience in big games and in front of crowds and I think a, a, an IPL for uh, for the women over there would create that not just for the Indian players um, obviously you know the majority will be Indian players but for some of the superstars of the women's game around the world um, to be able to experience what the men have for a while and, and it will no doubt have a hugely positive impact on the standard of the women's game going forward. We've already seen it improve drastically over the last particularly three to four years, I'd say. Uh, the fielding's gone through the roof. We only have to you know, watch someone like Beth Mooney in the field, as we've seen another example of today. Um, it's gone to another level, and, and there's no doubt that uh, there's the want for it and the, and the interest for it. So um, I think it's a fantastic initiative. Um, and I think no doubt Ramiz has probably had a bit of a hand in this thing just being hurried along a little bit, Mel. Uh, and final topic for today. Well, Sheffield Shield final is coming up. A chance for Western Australia to win their first Shield in more than 20 years. It's been a long time. Mm. Up against Victoria, they have, have obviously had a lot more recent success. Uh, but how do you see this shaping up, Cal? Yeah, look, it's going to be a good clash. I think um, both sides will come in, you know, with with some good confidence and belief. It's been a solid season for both teams. I, look, the Western Australian side, I, I find it hard to go past them. Um, and they only just recently knocked off the Victorians emphatically, actually. It was uh, an innings and 51 runs. So... No doubt, whilst I talk about the Vicks having good confidence as well, I, that will have taken a dent in, particularly, in particular against this Western Australian side. And you look through the lineup for Western Australia and it's, it, it really is stacked full of experience. Just a nice sprinkling of, uh, of youth in there, but certainly, I mean, it, it's an imposing lineup. Uh, when you look at the batting, you know, you've got Bancroft, Whiteman, um, you know, Shaw Marsh, uh, Hilton Cartwright, Josh Philippi. I mean, that, that is a strong lineup, coupled with a, you know, probably, I would say, a, a nice mix of youth and experience in the, in the bowling lineup in particular. Um, you know, Joel Paris looks in good form. Um, Aaron Hardy's shown a lot of, um, a lot of upside this, this season. And Lance Morris, who's just about as quick as anyone in the comp at the moment. Um, if there is uh, an area of their game that the Vicks might be able to exploit is if they're able to bat long. So um, they'll be looking to do that, no doubt. But uh, look, I'm probably edging towards WA looking at the two lineups. But Victoria have a very good record in finals, as we all know, over the last decade. So never write them off. But I'm just edging towards WA in this one. Well, you are Cal Stradamus for a reason. Uh, so I think that's... <laughs> That's that's settled. WA are going to win their first Sheffield Shield in uh, twenty something years. <laughs> you know, back in the the late nineties. So, uh, job done. They don't even need to play Cal because you know. Uh, Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll catch up again in a week to to talk about that, uh, and we'll know who the world. The World Cup uh, winners are in the in the women's tournament. We'll know who yes. won the series in Australia. So there'll be a lot to talk about. Uh, just quickly before we go, it will be just a couple of uh, IPL games played so far. So there's not too much we know about that yet. But mm. I'm just curious as to who you who you like as far as a, a squad being put together and who, who you think um, might be a real team to look out for. Yeah, look, I, I've. With, with this season, it looks like, uh, in my eyes, the Delhi Capitals are probably going to be favourites. So I, I feel like they've put together a really well-rounded squad. Um, and, and it's just, a, again, it's going to be such a, a tightly fought race um, throughout the tournament. It always is. Um, but I, I feel like my gut's going with the Delhi Capitals um, just on a hunch, I think, because it really is a hard one to pick every, every season. Um, you know, no doubt, um, you know, they're probably not favourites this season uh, by any stretch, but Chennai just always seem to find a way, don't they? Um, they find a way to be in and around the um, in and around the, the mark towards the back end of the tournament. 
And I think the ones that will challenge uh, the Delhi Capitals will probably be the Mumbai Indians. I think they're, they're always um, well represented and, and they've always got a strong squad. They're the, they're the three, I think, for mine. They're the outsiders being uh, the Chennai, um, Chennai Super Kings. Right. Well, all I can say is I, I, I um, have a soft spot for the for the Lucknow Super Giants, uh, but purely because uh, okay. you'll, you'll find out if you go and look on the Sporting News website, you will see that I have done a piece from Lucknow, uh, Australia, which is just outside my hometown of Orange. What? Uh, population 300. Yes. They're pumped. Mentioning that. They are pumped about the IPL. Uh, <laughs> ready to host some games in the beer garden of the, the Lucknow Tavern. So uh, if you haven't checked that out, go and, Brilliant. Yeah, go and have a bit of a giggle at that. Uh, and we'll see how they go in that as well. Um, thanks as always, Cal, for your thoughts. If you're watching at home. No worries, Mel. It's been good fun. Yeah, it has always. Give us a, a like, a subscribe, share your thoughts. We love hearing from all of you. Um, uh, and until next time, enjoy what's going to be a massive week of cricket. See you guys.